my head, I just have this big idea about what development work is and how we can save the world. But that's not really how things work. So I wanted to get involved in this course and learn that when you take a city that has been destroyed, how can you bring it back to what it used to be? My name is Erica Weiss, I'm 26 years old, and I'm at MIT for my Master's of Architecture. Our project in Tamo de Mora is focusing on um, basic construction materials and techniques. Um, there's been a lot of problems with um, buildings standing up seismically um, in a lot of the areas. The people living in Tamo de Mora right now are um, situated in what's basically like plastic tents. You know, they're hot, they collect heat during the day, the sun is shining down on them. There's no real security um, to them. There's no locks on their doors. They don't really have a full sense of home anymore. Um, what we're proposing is the use of quincha, which is um, a more sustainable as well as more seism seismically resistant material that's going to um, sort of provide a new way to build a house faster and cheaper for them. I chose this course because a lot of my work in the architecture program is design-based and kind of theoretical. If we're going to be doing all of this work, if we're going to be putting in all of this time, why not put it in towards the people who really need it? And, and I think that this just kind of reaffirmed the fact that there are plenty of projects out there that can use our, our sort of intellectual gain for something physical. My name is Josh Geltman. I am a senior at MIT and I am majoring in political science. So my project in Tambo de Mora primarily is focused on the water and sanitation issues in the city. Only half of the residents of Tambo de Mora have flush toilets right now. Uh, you, because the water table is so low, the there's groundwater bubbling up everywhere and it's stagnant and it is a feeding source for all sorts of wonderful nasty things and drinking water itself is is tough to come by they have large tanks full of water that gets trucked in from an outside source that sits there and people have to bring buckets over to it and pick up water if they want to bring it back to their house to use because not everyone has access to flush toilets, there are people that are digging latrines, open pit latrines, into the ground and using that as their, um, as their bathroom facilities. Unfortunately, that, you know, those holes in the ground are running right through the underground water table and so believe that that is polluting the water that people either drink or use to wash their hands or their clothes and that has repercussions for, for the whole town. Um, a lot of people in Tamba de Mora, because they don't have running water, are turning to the river to wash their clothes. And because the river is polluted with um, human waste coming from those latrines, we're working with graduate students and faculty at MIT to design bicycle-powered washing machine that can be used in Tamba de Mora. Um, so people will have the option of washing their clothes someplace else other than the river hopefully reducing the high rate of skin disease, skin uh, disorders that are going on right now. People are living in squalid conditions in some cases in Tampa de Mora right now, and the immediacy of this problem um, needs to be recognized. <laughs> I'm 18 years old and I'm studying urban studies and planning here at MIT. What I'm working on with my group is um, the issue of um, institutionalized racism in um, Peru towards Afro-Peruvians. And um, what I'm trying to do is implement a radio station there to um, promote cultural unity within their community. 
Despite the fact that uh, Afro-Peruvians, the descendants of slaves, were uh, emancipated in 1854, there still are many problems, and they, they haven't come very far in terms of civil rights for blacks in Peru. And so they're marginalized in the professional sector. Um, job opportunities are very low for them. This would be a means of um, uniting them, uh, giving them a chance to communicate these issues that they're going through, because at the moment, they're not able to talk about these things. They're, they're taboo. Especially as um, an African American, I didn't really, you don't always think about people of the African diaspora in other countries. And um, it's helped me to realize that, you know, the struggles are acute in other places and maybe even worse than, you know, things that I've experienced. And I feel like it's given me um, motivation to help others, people who are oppressed of, of, all, of all races. The class just turned out to be so much more amazing than I thought of. Hi, my name is Vasuda. Um, I'm 18 years old and I'm studying management and urban studies and planning at MIT. What we wanted to do was help the people regarding their everyday lives. When we went there, we realized that people need more help in their economic lives. And so now what we're working on is developing a microfinancing business um, to be able to give people the means to start their own small businesses. What we're also working on is um, starting a sort of community garden in the area because like after the earthquake, Peru was completely destroyed and people no longer have a place to get together and just sit there and talk. So what we're hoping the impact of our project will be is to bring the people closer together. The fact is, Tembo de Mora is completely destroyed, it seems so. But the thing is, the hope that people have still remains. Now when I think back and I talk to other people about it, it's amazing how much I've learned from this trip. Um, on a practical sense, because I want to do planning work, I've realized that everything takes time. Nothing happens within seconds, within minutes, or even within days. You have to be persistent. You have to continue to work on things. It's not fair for there to be so much discrepancy in economics or in social life.